The world is becoming more connected than ever, and countries are struggling to keep up. Their economies need to grow, but just like a single instrument can't play an entire symphony, they can't become successful on their own. So, which nations around the globe are using this opportunity to build better relations with each other and grow sustainably? Japan is one of the strongest global powers in the world right now. They have a rich history of innovation and discipline and are a nation committed to being excellent in everything they do. They have quickly become one of the world's leading economic giants, even after they went through the challenges of rebuilding their country after the war. The fact that they are outshining their competitors speaks for their resilience and creativity. And today, Japan is seen as a shining example of economic success. In contrast, the Philippines is at a turning point in its history. While the country has a rich culture and a fast-growing population, it is a developing nation that's still struggling with economic and social problems. The Philippines is now seeing a growing economy and a young workforce that is quickly becoming smarter. An increasing number of Japanese manufacturers are building their mother factories in the Philippines and sending their new Filipino engineers to take on leadership roles. These mother factories are slowly becoming hubs for activity and are responsible for product design and standardizing production throughout the world. One example of this is Tsuneishi Heavy Industries, a branch of Tsuneishi Holdings in Fukuyama, which is trying to pass on its expertise and skills to Filipino workers. Kenji Kawano, chief director of Tsuneishi Shipbuilding, said that their goal was to develop Tsuneishi Industries into a major mother factory in the world. Since its founding in 1994, Tsuneishi Heavy Industries has been expanding its factory on Cebu Island, where it makes bulk container ships and other vessels from 30,000 to 180,000 gross tons. The workforce has also grown quickly, recently reaching 13,000 employees. With this huge boost in global demand, the company has seen an increase in orders and is trying to boost its annual production by 50%. This expansion has had a serious impact on the Philippines' economy, especially on its job market. The Filipino hires are sent to Tsunishi Shipbuilding in Fukuyama for training in the ways of Japanese craftsmanship. The company is planning to send their engineers from Cebu as instructors to Tsunishi factories across the globe, and employees have already started being sent to Paraguay to serve as technology instructors at a Tsunishi Holdings dock. Tsunishi also has plans to establish a new shipyard in Southeast Asia and deploy their technology instructors there as well. Sumitomo Mitsui Banking Corp made a massive investment in Rizal Commercial Banking Corp RCBC, in the Philippines and transferred funds equal to $460.8 million. This investment was part of the Japanese banking giant strategy to expand its presence in Asia. As a result of this huge investment, Sumitomo Mitsui's ownership in RCBC increased from 5% to 20%. In line with this agreement, Japan's second-largest bank acquired 382 million RCBC shares for 71 pesos each, marking a significant increase from the previous day's closing price. In a separate statement, Sumitomo Mitsui announced that their mutual understanding with their business partners had grown since starting in 2021, and they were confident that they'd keep expanding. The two banks are now looking to explore new business opportunities. This announcement led to a notable rise in RCBC shares with an initial increase of up to 27% during early morning trading in the Philippines. RCBC has been on a steady path to recovery following the after-effects of the COVID-19 pandemic on the global economy. Thanks to robust growth in corporate and consumer lending, the bank's net profit surged by 88%, reaching 10 billion pesos in the first nine months of this year surpassing the 7 billion peso profit achieved in the entire year of 2021. It's worth noting that Sumitomo Mitsui initially acquired a 5% stake in the Philippine lender, but this was just one example of Japanese investment in their new partnership. Subscribe now to follow along and get the latest updates. Toyota is a global giant in the automobile industry and is famous for its extensive production of over 10 million vehicles each year. The company handles five brands, Lexus, Daihatsu, Hino, Toyota, and Rans. 
In response to the soaring demand for automobiles, Toyota shifted its production to the Philippines and has been actively finding Filipino workers for international assignments. Toyota Motor Philippines launched the Toyota Motor Philippines School of Technology in Santa Rosa, Laguna, near Metropolitan Manila. This institution is dedicated to giving Filipino technicians the skills required for work within Toyota's factories, both domestically and overseas. After the successful completion of the two-year program, focusing on automobile maintenance and repair, the class of 600 students will be well prepared to find employment as proper mechanics at Toyota certified car dealerships worldwide. English-speaking Filipino mechanics are highly valued by international dealers. Nippon Yusen is a Japanese shipping company, and they also increase the number of available slots for new students at the NYK TDG Maritime Academy Opens, located in the vicinity of Manila by 50%, bringing the total to 180 slots. This move was part of their joint efforts to find and nurture a larger pool of talent that could be used internationally. Nippon also places great importance on its Filipino sailors, with almost 70% of its crew members coming from the Philippines. In a significant achievement, the first Filipino was appointed as the captain of a liquefied natural gas tanker a role that demanded a high level of expertise and specialized skills. But why are Japanese companies investing so heavily in branching out and setting up shop in the Philippines? What does either side get out of it? These multinational companies have many advantages in setting up mother factories in the Philippines. One significant perk they're getting is the widespread English proficiency in the nation. This might seem like a simple enough thing, but in a field as complicated as technology, you need communication to be as fast and simple as possible. The huge availability of a skilled workforce is another aspect that companies find attractive. With the country's population surpassing 100 million and an average age of just 23, it's a youthful and energetic labor force. According to estimates from the International Monetary Fund, the Philippines' population is projected to reach 125 million by 2023. In contrast to their Western branches, Japanese manufacturers like to give their attention to other Asian countries like Thailand and Indonesia, where many subcontractors are already in place. But as more Western businesses delegate call center and back office operations to the Philippines, these activities are now extending to the regions of Mindanao and Panay, where labor costs are more competitive. Filipinos are known for their strong work ethic, and this is something that is extremely respected in Japanese culture. This shared value means that the Japanese companies and their outsourced Filipino staff naturally get along well. Both nations are recognized for their welcoming, respectful, and warm nature, creating an environment that is good for effective work relationships. When Japanese companies outsource services to BPO providers in the Philippines, Japan's investment in the Philippines plays a big role in pushing the growth of the Philippine economy. They are given access to cutting-edge technology, knowledge transfer, and funding for infrastructure development. These investments trigger a chain reaction, creating new job opportunities, funding fresh local businesses, and bettering the overall quality of life for Filipinos. Japan's investment in the Philippines extends beyond the archipelago, and it strategically improves the connectivity in the Asia-Pacific region. The Philippines serves as a crucial gateway for Japanese businesses to tap into the expansive Southeast Asian market. This relationship protects trade ties between Japan and the Philippines. Ranking Japan as one of the Philippines' largest economic partners, Japanese investment makes sure that there is a steady flow of goods and services, and economic growth is constantly happening in both nations. But the investment is not only based on money, it also focuses on cultural exchange. Japanese businesses that establish a presence in the Philippines bring with them their work ethics, values, and traditions, promoting a sense of bonding and unity. But this collaborative partnership is not one one-sided at all. Japanese companies are reaping their rewards as well. By investing in the Philippines, Japan diversifies its investment portfolio and gains access to a bustling Southeast Asian market, 
This diversification is important for long-term economic stability and growth. Japan's active investment in the Philippines improves its reputation as a prominent economic and political player in the world. With the Philippines as a dependable partner, Japan secures supply chains for crucial resources like raw materials and labor, further building up its own industries and economic resilience. Japanese companies can capitalize on the pool of skilled Filipino professionals well-versed in technology and IT services as the Philippines evolves into a thriving hub for outsourcing and offshoring, providing Japan with a cost-effective and efficient workforce. And that's all for today's video. If you enjoyed it, let me know in the comment section and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next one.